Hello everyone, uh, my name is Darren Daly. I'm the Principal Statistician of the Clinical Research Facility in Cork. And today I'm just going to talk for just a few minutes about some basic ideas around how to enter data into spreadsheets. And so the example I'm working with today is just a small student survey uh, that we recently did uh, to understand some information about our undergraduate students. And so it's just a basic Word document uh, that someone else made and you know kind of bog standard stuff with a bunch of questions and we actually had the people fill this out on paper uh, why i have absolutely no idea but it doesn't matter this is what we're dealing with uh, and so the next thing we want to be able to do is take all of these paper instruments and then put them into some kind of a spreadsheet now people who know me know that i am not uh, someone who would recommend the use of microsoft excel uh, as a data collection tool uh, except that uh, people use it all the time and so it's really important actually that we can use it the best way we possibly can and so what I want to talk about is just the basic principles maybe of how we're going to get information from this particular survey instrument and into this Excel sheet as safely as possible but also in a way that makes it a lot easier for me as someone who's going to actually analyze these data uh, to actually process the data and bring it into my system and my workflow and actually get something done with it. And we're going to focus this basically on having three different sheets. All right, so the first sheet is what we're going to call the actual data set. All right, so this is going to be uh, where we have all of the information about each individual respondent coded into this spreadsheet. And the most important feature of this part of the Excel sheet is that we're going to have the things we think of as variables are always going to be in columns. And a variable should only include one particular type of information. All right, so if your variable is something like age, this should always just include numbers. There shouldn't be anything else in this column. This should be number one and this should be number three. Uh, retry, sorry, I'll get back to that in just a second. Um, you know, this should be 20. Uh, this should be 56 or whatever. There should never be anything where we're just going to write dog in or a note or anything like that. We don't want to mix that kind of stuff up. Uh, the other really important thing is that each row should reflect one observation. In this particular case, an observation is a person who's filled out the survey one time. So columns are always variables, rows are always observations, and the cells in a given column only contain one type of information, a number, a text field, a date, and so on. So that is what's going to, when we start to fill in the data sheet, this is going to be the main database or the main data frame or data set that we're going to use to actually analyze data. Now, the extra little bit of information we need, number one, is what I've done here is I've given each column a kind of short, relatively understandable name uh, that we can use when we're actually manipulating the data kind of as a convenience. Uh, and importantly, there's no spaces in these. They're generally readable. You can kind of understand what they are. But just in case uh, it's not entirely clear what each column is, we need some place in the data sheet, uh, in, in this Excel spreadsheet, to tell us what everything is. And so that's what we have in sheet two. And so what I've done here is I've just linked the variable names that I've taken from here, and I've just linked those in uh, to here to the actual things from the thing from the actual survey. So, you know, what is your gender? Just cutting and pasting straight away from that. All right. So now I've got that information there, and so I can always just click back and forth to double check what everything is. Finally, what I have in sheet three is a list of possible responses for the different things. And so what we're trying to do here, one of the problems with Excel sometimes is that you can put any kind of information into the cells. We want to restrict that. We really want to use uh, the spreadsheet as much as possible to prevent any kind of errors uh, in entry. Uh, and there's better ways to do that in Excel, but again, we live in a world where lots of people use Excel, so you might as well know how to do this stuff your own, and it's really easy to do, and it will save you a lot of time. All right, so if we just do an example right now, I'll show you how we can use this. Uh, so next, so where did I get to? I was over here to the year of the program, and so if I come down here, so we'll just do this one. And so this question is, are you paid employment while studying for your degree? All right, so I'm going to put in a new variable. I'm just going to call it paid. And I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to bang it into sheet two, bang it into sheet three. All right, I'll come back. And then I'll copy that text. And again, if you can do all this electronically, 
then all the better and save yourself all this time and effort. But sometimes you have to do things like this and so you might as well do it the right way. Uh, and then we're going to pop that in. So now I've got the actual question linked to that. And then the final thing I want to do is I want to take, uh, sorry, I want to take these options and I want to make sure that it's just easy. You don't have to type that in every time. So come over here, come to my third sheet again, and I'm just going to enter those in here. All right, so one, two, three, four, five options. Now, the fun part is I'm going to go to this entire column, paid. I'm going to come over to the data tab, and I'm going to click on data validation. And what this is, is basically how we can set up a given column to only take certain types of data. So right now it's set for any kind of value, but I can add a list. And then once I've done that, I can identify the source of the list here, which we know is in sheet three. I highlight those cells and hit enter and then OK. Now if I come back to this column for paid and I go here, then I know I've only got these different options. All right, so now if I code type in anything else, it's going to give me an error and that's it. So I'm going to prevent myself from entering in any kind of a silly thing. All right. Uh, and so we can do things like age, for example. Uh, I'd already set a restriction here, which we ran across earlier when I try to type in zero. I've set it up to only allow whole numbers between 10 and 100. All right, so that's the basics. And so once I get the, now I'll take a, a bit of my afternoon to go through here and just kind of do this repetitively for each of the questions, then what I've got myself here is a good Excel spreadsheet, as good as an Excel spreadsheet is going to get anyway, uh, that's going to really facilitate the collection of the data, and it's going to come to me as a statistician, and it's already going to be in a format that I already like it. Um, so just to recap, we have sheet one, which is the data, the actual data set itself. The columns are all going to be variables. These are things about the observations. The rows are going to be the observations themselves. So if I was here, my ID, my gender, my age, etc., we're only in any given column going to put one kind of information there. We're not going to mix and match. If it's a number, it's a number. If it's a date, it's all dates. If it's a text field, then it's all text fields. We're going to link then these variable names here to a more complete name in the next sheet. So that's easy enough to find. It also makes it easy for me to bring this stuff into other software and link these longer text fields into these shorter variable names. And then we're going to set up these, uh, you know, these, these restrictive lists that we don't enter in the wrong kind of information. All right, I hope that was helpful and not too long. Uh, and so thank you for listening uh, and goodbye.